Hello everybody, my name is Muon and welcome to part 5 of my How to Crochet for Absolute Beginners series. This is a continuation of my last video in which I discussed how to make a magic circle or how to make a sort of circular foundation chain and then how to set up your magic circle in order to start working in the round. So I was having a really hard time figuring out how I was actually going to approach this video. I spent hours kind of scrapping ideas and then reworking and scrapping other ideas, mainly because I have kind of a weird brain, but also because if you want a thorough understanding of the why of this technique, like why we do certain things or why we do it the way we do, then it takes kind of a lot to wrap your head fully around this idea and a lot of explaining on my part. But fortunately, is it is fully possible to kind of just ignore all of the all of the details and the nitty-gritty and just kind of follow a pattern or follow simple instructions, especially if you don't plan on making your own crochet designs and you just want to follow tutorials, right? Okay, so you might be kind of confused as to why I have a flat piece and not the magic circle that I finished off with in the last video, but I kind of realized that it would be clearer for me to show you how to increase and decrease kind of independently first and then apply it to the magic circle and working it around. So I have this flat piece, my three and a half millimeter hook and my weight four yarn, and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna start this row. And to increase is pretty simple. All you do is you work one stitch, right? In this case, I did a single crochet and one under the V. And then in the same spot, in the same exact stitch that you just worked into, not the next one, not, not this one, but into the same stitch, you just make another of the exact same stitch, right? And you can kind of see that whereas this is a single stitch, there are two single crochets here sort of bunched together, right? So that's an increase, and I can do that again, right? Not into the next stitch, but into the very same stitch, into this very same space. You just simply do the exact same stitch into that exact same space, and then you can keep doing it again. Ah, oh, right. And again. And again. And basically what we've done is we've just put two stitches into each group of one stitch, or what was originally one stitch spreads out and becomes two stitches, and that's an increase. But how do we decrease? So I am going to chain one, turn my work, and there's multiple ways that you can decrease, but the way that I've found uh, is the least hard on your fingers and your hands and your wrists is to take our work and we are going to just put our hook into the front loop only. We're going to go up into the front loop only as if we are working a front loop only stitch. And then I am going to whilst the first front loop only is on my hook, go under the second front loop only as well. And then I will take my hook and pull through both of those front loops to have two loops on my hook, pull through two, and that's a single crochet. Basically what has happened is when we increase, we have one single crochet that spreads into two, and now we have two single crochets that we are basically smushing into one, right? I'm going to show you again. We go from underneath, right? Front loop only and front loop only. Yarn over, pull through both of them. And the way you're yarning over differs depending on which stitch you're doing, but I'm doing a single crochet, so I yarn over once in the clockwise direction and then I pull through two for a single crochet. And again, decrease from underneath front loop only. With that same loop still on our hook, we're gonna do the next stitch front loop only. Pull through both of the front loops. 
so that we have two loops on our hook and we pull through. Alright, I'm going to recap very quickly about how we set up the magic circle. So we grab our two crabby fingers and hold the tail such that it is down and the ball end such that it is up and away from us. Ball end goes clockwise around our index finger and crosses over to make an X and you can hold the tail with any fingers you want or you cannot hold it at all. And then we are going to hold the tail to create some tension with our two fingers here. That would be my middle finger and my ring finger. Again, holding, you know, for any sort of tension is optional. I just prefer it this way. We put our hook under the top right arm and then we grab the ball yarn, pull through. Then we turn our hook and our hand clockwise into the upright position. We grab the ball yarn and pull through that loop. Right? And then we pull the ball end of the yarn until it's tight. And I'm going to take the tail out of this circle. And when we work into the magic circle, we hold on to the circle for stability and we work directly into the circle loop, right? Directly into this loop. I'm gonna set up my hand. Yarn goes over the pinky, under the pinky, up, behind my three fingers, and I'm going to hold the circle with my thumb and my middle finger. And to start off, we're going to have six stitches. So we go directly in, yarn over, pull through the circle, and pull up a loop. So we have two loops on the hook, pull through, or yarn over, pull through, single crochet. Through the circle, pull the yarn through and up, yarn over, pull through, single crochet. And then I'm going to just do that four more times so that I have a total of six. And then once I am done with the desired number of stitches, I'm going to take the tail, and you can kind of hold the body of the rest of your work, pull them in separate directions until your circle is nice and tight, and the center is virtually invisible. Okay, so hopefully this is familiar to you because we are essentially back where we left off in my last video. And this is also the part where it gets kind of hard for me to explain, but I'm going to do my best to be as clear and, I guess, simple about this as possible. So when we are growing our circle, right, we're going out, 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 kind of like, you know, those tree stumps and the tree stumps have rings, right? As we go out, we increase the number of stitches in each row by six. So I start with six, then I grow to 12, then to 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, and then 60, and so on and so forth. Basically, you're gonna get really good at your six times table, right? And so we're going to just start off with our first row. Sometimes when we work, it can be kind of hard to find the first stitch uh, because it's just kind of tight in the beginning. So what I like to do is from the first uh, stitch that is closest to my hook, or technically the last stitch of the row, I will count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yes, this is definitely the sixth stitch. And as I've mentioned in the past, you can go into the back loop or the front loop, but standardly you go under both or under the entire V. And I'm going to make a single crochet into that first stitch. Right? So we start with six. Our goal is to get to 12. So essentially we just double the amount of stitches we have, right? Because six plus six is 12. So I have one, then into the same stitch, I'm going to increase to two. So now that one space has one and then two, right? Now I'm going to go into the next stitch and that's going to be our third stitch for this row. So one, two, three, and now four, right? Because it's technically one, two, one, two, one, two, but we're counting it sort of holistically. So one, two, three, four, right? 
so three. Into that same exact stitch, we're going to increase to four. And again, so this is five. Same stitch, increase to six. Seven. In the next stitch, same exact stitch, increase to eight. Nine in the next stitch. Same exact stitch, we increase to 10. Next stitch, 11. Same exact stitch, increase to 12. Hi everyone, editing new on here. So I didn't realize that I had said this in a previous cut and then not in this cut. Basically, uh, instead of thinking of the circle as a circle, we're going to think of it as a hexagon, where when we start, right, we have six stitches, and one stitch represents each side of the hexagon, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. So for the second row, then we would have six sides and two stitches per side, because 12 divided by six is two. Each side, one, two, three, four, five, six, has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve stitches. At this point, it can be helpful to put a stitch marker on the you know, the most current stitch. And this is because instead of counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, it can be just easier to kind of mindlessly count 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, oh, stitch marker, that means I'm done for this row, now time to move on, right? And in the beginning, it's pretty easy, but, you know, once you get to like 16 stitches before you increase, you kind of, kind of lose track, so it can be helpful to have a stitch marker. All right, so currently we have 12 stitches in a row because this is row two. To get to row three, we do 12 plus six equals 18, right? But this is different from the first row because instead of increasing one, two, one, two, one, two, we're going to be doing one, two, three, one, two, three, or we're going to be increasing into the second stitch to reach the third stitch. And again, kind of complicated, kind of hard to understand, but what you can think of is, what is 18 divided by six? That's three. So I want to increase a third stitch, right? A third stitch, a third stitch. If each side currently has two stitches, right? Because it's a hexagon, then the groups of two need one more to become three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And let me just show you so that it makes a little more sense. So we go into the first stitch and we single crochet one. Then we go into the next stitch and we single crochet two. Right? That would be one side of the hexagon. Now what we do is from two, we go up to three into the same stitch so that we have one, two, three. One, two, three. Now we're going to the next stitch. Four, five, and then from five, we go up to six in that same stitch. And again, seven, eight, and then up to nine. 10, 11, 12, into that same stitch, 13, 14, 15, in the same stitch, 16, then I'm going to take my stitch marker out, 17, and then move up to our final stitch of 18. Right? So the way I counted it was fully through, but again, as I mentioned, what you can do instead to make it a little clearer is think of it as one, two, three, 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 six times, right? And notice that the stitch that we crochet or increase up to is a multiple of three, right? But we are increasing to get to a multiple of six. So just think of it as like six times three, right? Is 18, six is the number that we're reaching, but it's it's like a common 
denominator, I guess, for the both of them. Now that we have 12, sometimes it can be helpful to put a stitch marker because while I was counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, once you get to higher and higher numbers, it can be easier to kind of turn your brain off a little, I guess. And instead of counting from 1 to 12, I would count 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, you know, six times. And that's just sometimes a little easier on the brain. And then you're like, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, oh, stitch marker, that means I'm done for this row. Now it's time to, you know, go up or go down, depending on whether or not. Uh, Great. So now that I have 12 stitches, I put my little stitch marker here because although it's pretty easy to count from 1 to 12, it can be hard to count from 1 to let's say 120, right? So instead of doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, what I can do is count 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 6 times, right? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. But then, once I reach my stitch marker, I'm like, oh, I guess I must be done. That must have been six, and then I can move on, right? So you, you kind of let the stitch marker alleviate some of that burden for you. So since we have 12, we are going to be moving up to 18, right? 12 plus six is 18. And this part is kind of hard for me to explain. But think of it as 18 divided by 6 is what number? 3, right? And if we're thinking about the hexagon, currently each side has two stitches. So how do I get to three stitches per side? Well, that means on the 1, 2, the last stitch for that side, I'm going to increase 1 so that it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, right? because three sides, well, three stitches on each side and having six sides in total leaves you with 18 stitches. So I'm just gonna show you so that hopefully it kind of makes actual sense. So we're going to single crochet into the first stitch as one. Now the second stitch is the last stitch on our hexagon side, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to crochet one into that stitch and then we're going to increase here to three, right? So that would be one, two, up to three. Next side, right? One, two, and in the last stitch on that side, which is two, we go up to three. So in that same stitch, we increase to three, right? And then one, Two, go up to three in that same stitch. One, two, go up to three. One, two, go up to three. One, take my stitch marker out. Two, and go up to three, right? Or you could have counted it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, but again, sort of cutting it down into small clusters can make it easier to keep track. I'm going to put my stitch marker here. So 18 plus six is 24. 24 divided by six is four. So that means my goal is to have four stitches on each side of the hexagon. Currently, I have three, right? So on the last stitch, the last stitch in that set on that side, or the one, two, three, third stitch, I'm going to increase into the third to reach four. So we're going to go one, two, and this is the last stitch on that side of the hexagon, three, go up to four. And we're going to go 
One, two, three, last stitch on that side, go up to four by going to the same stitch, increase to four. One, up, oh, I got a little stuck. It's okay, one, two, three, last stitch on that side. And now we go into the same stitch to go increase or go up to four. Again, one, two, three, which is the last one for that side, go up to four. One, two, three is the last stitch for the side. Now we go up to four. And then one, two, take my stitch marker out. Three, we go up to four. And if you count, you should have 24 stitches in total. And then just for the sake of uh, giving examples and some clarity, I'm not going to show you physically, but I will explain uh, the next couple of rows, right? So the next row is 24 plus six. So that would be 30, right? We want 30 stitches, 30 divided by six is five. So we want five stitches per side of the hexagon. And actually here we can see a pretty pronounced hexagon starting to form. And that's okay. Um, for small pieces especially, the hexagon will go away after you've stopped increasing and you kind of just work rounds of the same number of stitches. Um, larger projects, you kind of need a different technique to maintain a circular shape, but that's kind of something that I could cover in a different video, right? But back to what I was saying. So we want five stitches on that one side, but we currently have four. So on the last stitch in that section, or on that side, we're going to increase from four plus one to five. Four, five, right? Then we are going to reach 30. We go from 30 plus six to 36. 36 divided by six, six, right? So we have five stitches on one side, five plus one on that end where five is, reach six, right? Six, 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 right? To 36. That's as clear as I think I can get, like the most simple I can get with this explanation as I possibly can. Um, hopefully, you can sort of see the patterns in that, but if not, I can try to do a really in-depth video. I think um, I might pull my hair out or something trying to do it, but if it's for you, I will be willing to be bald. So now that we're at this point, if we decide that we don't want to increase anymore, right, we don't want the... I guess the circumference, we don't want the circumference of our circle or our sphere to get any larger, then we can leave it like this, right? And if anything, you can just keep it flat and you have a coaster or a scrubby, you know, it would be bigger probably, or, you know, maybe a tiny coaster for a tiny mug for a tiny elf friend. Um, so if you want a coaster or a scrubby, just leave it like this, uh, or you could do one more row. Otherwise, if you want to make a ball or any sort of three-dimensional object, what we do is we're just going to crochet the number of stitches that we have in this row just multiple times. So if I have, let's see, 24 stitches currently, I'm just going to do a couple rounds of 24 stitches. And it's probably going to take me a while, so I will get back to you after I'm done. A few moments later. I have completed about four rows of 24, and if it's hard to keep track of how many rows you've already done. What I like to do is I just have a paper on the side, paper and a pencil, and I'll just do tally marks, right? Because sometimes you can get up to maybe 40 rows of the same number of stitches, and it can really be easy to forget where you are. Oh, also I realized that I've been saying rows just because it's kind of more inherent to me, but since we are working in the round, there are people who refer to them as rounds. So rows, rounds, whatever floats your boat. If I say either, then you'll know what I mean. 
Anyway, so I have four. And if you're wondering, how do I know how many tall to make for something like a ball, right? Or even, you know, uh, one of those cylinder thingies with caps on the ends, right? Think of the first couple of rows that you were increasing, so not the first one, two, three, four from here, but from this part on, it's kind of hard for me to point it out, but from this part, this whole section, that's all the section where we were increasing, right? So if we think about it as like a, a burger bun, I guess, imagine your burger has only the top parts of the bun, right? You only have two top parts for your bun. The middle section is the number of rows you're going to be doing, and the top part of the bun and the other top part of the bun, right, are going to essentially have the same width, right? Because we're going to be inversing what we did with increasing for the decrease. So if I have this much increase height, right, and this much decrease height, and I want a ball, then I would say, okay, this is how much I did to increase, this is how much I did to decrease, or will do to decrease, so this must be how much I need for my rows, right? So then you kind of estimate, oh, this is, you know, I've got six rows here, but it's not quite there, so I'll do seven, right? Oh, that's too many, I'll take that out, or oh, that's not enough, I'll do eight, right? So you kind of just estimate with your eyeballs, and if it doesn't work out, we undo it and we try again, right? Okay, so with that out of the way, you might have been noticing that it's become kind of cumbersome to hold your piece, right? As you work, 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 your hand is like, oh my god, I don't know how to hold this, right? Everything's in my way. And so you can leave it like this. It's like those cute little acorn hats almost, actually. But what most people typically do is we, from this point on, invert the whole piece, right? That's where you can see those pretty X's that a lot of amigurumi pieces display. Okay, so I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in. The decrease, right? Think about it, the, my hook here. So it's a little easier to hold if it's like, you know, inverted, because you can put your fingers like this, right? Now, how do we do that second bun, the inverted bottom bun, or the this way? Currently, we have 24 stitches, right? If we increase by six each round or each row, then now we're going to decrease by six. So 24 minus six is what? 18. 18 divided by six is three. So currently we have 24, which means we have four stitches per side of the hexagon. What do I need to do if I want to go from four to three? Well, on the last stitches, I am going to go three, four. Join three and four to subtract one. Or one, two, three, four. So that we have one, two, and then one joined one, which becomes three in total, right? Basically, we're going to be decreasing at the end of each uh, side of the hexagon, right? So we're gonna go one, two, and we are not going to go and just do three and then decrease four, five, because then we're kind of pushing into the other sides of the hexagon. You know, we're going outside of our property. Instead, we join three and four together, right? Because again, we want to stay within the confines of that side, but we want to decrease from four to three. So one, two, three, four. Again, we go front loop only, front loop only, pull through both, single crochet. And then we're going to go into the next side. One, two, four stitches in total on this side. We want to go from four to three, so we're going to decrease three, four. And again, one, two, decrease three, four. One, two, decrease three, four. Need more yarn. One, two, decrease three, 
decrease three, four, one, two, and then take my stitch marker out, decrease three, four. Okay, now we should have 18 stitches in our round. From here, we go from 18 minus six equals 12. And 12 divided by six is two. So we go from three stitches per side to two stitches per side. So we are going to decrease every one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, because we have one, and then these two threes join together to become a single one. So we're gonna go one, two, three, next one, one, two, three, Okay, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, and then take my stitch marker out. And then it's going to be two, three. All right. So one important thing to note is that as we are decreasing, instead of kind of sprouting out, we're pulling in stitches together. And so that can be a little hard to do because the stitches are fighting within an inch of their life. They want to be separated, right? So there's going to be some space sometimes. You want to, you're gonna to wanna to pull a little tighter, have a little tighter tension. But again, just be careful that your hands are safe. From this point on, if you want to make a ball, some sort of 3D thing, now we would take our stuffing. Usually I like to stuff my projects around the second or third to last row. So that's what I'm gonna do. So you're just gonna stuff. And it's kind of better to overstuff than understuff because over time the uh, polyfill becomes compacted. So then your your squishy or plushy thing is going to become kind of deflated and lumpy looking, right? So we're gonna just fill it as much as possible. And from here, because we have 12, 12 minus six is six, six divided by six is one. So we currently have two stitches per side and now we want to have one stitch per side. So we're just gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, right? I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, right? And once we get to this point, you might be thinking, okay, so now we want to have zero <laughs> stitches. So we do six minus six equals zero, blah, 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 something like that, right? Or we would just decrease every one, two, one, two, one, two until the end. You can do that, but what ends up happening is, is because when we are increasing, right, we have a sort of spiral, but the layers of the round are kind of going on top of each other. So at the end, you have almost this protrusion, right? Like a, think of it like a cinnamon roll, like a cinnamon bun, you have that one sort of end. It doesn't make a perfect circle. There's a little thing, overlap, right? And that overlap, if you're just decreasing, decreasing, decreasing by two, can stick up. So what I like to do is I'm just going to decrease maybe to three. So one, two, and then three, four, five. I'm just gonna do a couple, right? And now I'm going to use the height of this overlap part and kind of just, right, I don't have my tapestry needle on hand, do I? All right, so I'm just going to cut it and pull through, grab my stuff, and you see how this overlap here kind of covers or has the height to cover the rest of this hole, right? And then you would just take your tapestry needle and just weave in and seal this little gap. And then you would have a circle. So I'm not gonna do that because I wanna be able to reuse this thread, but yeah, once you seal it off and you cut everything, you're gonna have a nice little ball. All right, so that's the end of today's video. I had a really hard time explaining everything, so hopefully that doesn't translate to it being unclear. Um, I, I hope that everybody understands what I was trying to communicate, right, and that you were able to get something out of this. 
I've been Mulan, and I will be wishing you all the happiness in the world. I hope you have a wonderful day.